Welcome to this tutorial video about Frequency Shifter. Introduced in FL Studio 20.8.4. You can use Frequency Shifter to do this. This. Or this. Stop the tape and hit rewind. You feel this piece, stop the tape and hit rewind. If you feel this piece, stop the tape and hit rewind. And many other out of the box things. Frequency shifting, unlike pitch shifting, results in the loss of the original harmonic relationship between all frequencies in the sound. We should explore what that means more closely. As we mentioned in our Parametric EQ2 video and Mixing Basics series, our perception of sound, in almost every way, is logarithmic. The same is true for frequency. Every octave is a doubling in frequency. So let's have a look at these three sine waves. One is at 110 Hz, that's an A. The second is about 330 Hz, that's an E. And the last one is at 523.3 Hz, that's a C. Yes, A minor. If I pitch these up an entire octave using a pitch shifter plugin, every one of those frequencies is now double what it was previously. Let's try to replicate this with frequency shifting. I'll add another 110 Hz to our lowest sine waves so it doubles in frequency. Hmm, that does not sound like a minor chord anymore. Let's compare. The reason frequency shifting sounds so different is that while I have correctly shifted the lowest frequency up an octave, and so it's still an A, I have only added 110 Hz to the other two, which makes them no longer an E or a C. The distance between the frequencies has shrunk substantially with increased pitch, changing their harmonic relationship. Now that we know what it sounds like, let's have a look at frequency shifters controls. The main frequency knob controls the amount of frequency shift in Hz. You can select the maximum frequency shift with the range switch here, which also allows synchronizing the shifting to your project tempo. The mode switch lets you select between ring modulator, frequency shifter and frequency shifter HQ. The high quality mode here reduces aliasing for extreme amounts of frequency shifting, particularly in the downwards direction. The keen-eyed among you will have noticed the sidechain selector here. This control only works when the plugin is in ring modulation mode. When an input is selected here, it will be used as the modulator instead of the internal sine wave oscillator. The sideband controls let you blend between the parts of the sidebands used on left versus right channels. You can set them to wildly different shapes or even invert them. So you'd use all positive on one side and all negative on the other for very stereo results. Or you can link them together using this control, which if you have them set to the same value will not change the stereo field at all. You can control the starting phase of the internal oscillator here. The left-right phase control introduces a small offset between the left and right modulation oscillator. Like a delay plugin, the feedback parameter controls the amount of signal being fed back from the frequency shifter's output into its input. This results in the signal being shifted more and more after each feedback round with a broad change in the frequency spectrum. The mix knob is self-explanatory. It blends the unprocessed signal with the frequency shifted version. And stereo is a stereo width control for the frequency shifted signal. So let's look at some example uses. 
you can use a frequency shifter to pitch drums without losing the tonal quality of the transient. This is particularly helpful when retuning acoustic drum kits or pitching down cymbal sounds. When using traditional pitch shifting or resampling mode, a lot of high frequency information will be lost. One of the most common uses for frequency shifters is in ambient and horror sound design. Let's start with a piano sound, add years and years of reverb tail to it, and then shift its frequency down a few thousand hertz. Instant spooky noises. You can also use frequency shifter to create time synchronized phasing effects. This is very helpful when you're trying to create rhythmic modulation in a dance music context. Simply sync the plugin to tempo here and now the frequency knob will snap to steps. When you mix the frequency shifted signal with the original sound using the mix knob, you can intensify the phasing effect. We mentioned it earlier, but frequency shifter also does ring modulation. In this case, it even lets you use your own modulation signal using the sidechain selector. Helpful for creating very distinct and sharp sounds when used on the higher frequencies, for example. Here, I'm using frequency splitter to apply the ring modulation only to the highest band on a square wave bass sound. And here is the signal I will be using as the modulator, receiving the same notes as the source sound. This can make the high end sound a lot more focused in your sound design. You can also use sidechain ring modulation to imprint acoustic profiles from samples into synthesized drum sounds. Here I've made a very synthetic sounding kick and I'll ring modulate it with an acoustic sound using frequency shifter. And finally, a special treat for those who think that isn't enough. We've sat down and key tracked all of the possible frequency parameters in Frequency Shifter inside Patcher. With this patch, it's possible to use MIDI notes to control Frequency Shifter's frequency. That means you can dial in a particular style of phasing or modulation you like. and that is tracked across all of the notes you're playing and will stay consistent, giving you maximum control over the resulting timbre of the sound. That's all you need to know about Frequency Shifter to get started using it. We hope that this video helps you expand your horizon when it comes to modulation possibilities in FL Studio. As always, be sure to check out the video info for any relevant manual or video links and the example projects used in this video.